And Bruce, Happy New Year a month later. Well, thank you much. Gosh, it's great to be here. Good to have you. <clears throat> Love hanging with you guys. What's top of mind, my trading warrior brother? <laughs> uh, well, um, I uh, should I put up my screen? Sure. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I, I want to use all my time. I have. I always have more than I can talk about. Okay. So, but Dale, Happy New Year! Happy New Year, Blake. And uh, you know, the last time we got together was October. I think it was October thirteenth. And uh, that was such a perfect time for us to get together. I don't know if that'll be the case this time, but uh, I, yeah, I have a little, turning point. I have a little nostalgia for you from what we talked about back then. But uh, let's see, this was my slide from then. And can, can stocks rally in the fourth quarter? So, and now it's will stocks rally in 2023, but I do have some interest rates uh, I do have some a uh, little bit on the currencies. I don't have the the deep dive that you all do there, but maybe my perspective, which I believe to be relatively long term, uh, I think can be uh, can be good. So okay. uh, no uh, doubt about it. it. <laughs> right or so wrong, let's... your perspectives are good. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, often wrong, never in doubt. And uh, uh, so here is a slide I've put up in the past with you all. And this is the 10 year decennial pattern, thanks to Season X, my friends. And they, uh, uh, we can see here, this is the year zero year of the decade up to the ninth year. This is just averaging all the decades going back to 1897. This is through 2015, but it's not gonna be a whole lot different from what we see here if we were to add these most recent years. And so here we can see that in the middle of the two years, so in this case, 2022, uh, we have a pretty important low that comes after weakness in the first part of the decade. And then from that, off that sometime in the second half of the year, we get some kind of a launch. And then we uh, have in the third year, you can see generally the first part of the year is quite good. And then we have a stalling action in the third year. The fourth year, which is really important in this case, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second, is uh, the fourth year is an election year. And so, and then uh, uh, the fifth year is, we can see, is uh, quite spectacular. Now, decades can vary from this. The one that is closest is the 80s. The 80s is quite good, but there's yeah, but family the resemblance 19... in 1982 yeah. low in August, and that was exactly yes. That was the and, beginning uh, of forty-year bull market, and that was my launch into the industry. So I'm, uh, I'm completely tainted <laughs> by yeah. my experience post 1982. But nonetheless, uh, this I think is a great roadmap, and we we look for the things that are common, and then we also look for the differences. And as we go through time, and uh, and I've uh, unfortunately, Dale, I've I've been through four of these now, <laughs> and yeah. so, um, yeah. The, but it's a cool tool. So yeah, anyway, with, uh, all that wisdom, Bruce. Yeah, right. <laughs> if I could only remember it. <laughs> um, I remember things like August nineteen eighty two, but ask me what I did yesterday. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And uh, so, so here we are looking at this recent downtrend. And then of course, uh, 2023, this could very well be some kind of a roadmap for us for how the year could go forward. And uh, so what I want to do is just very briefly, I'm going to go quite fast. And then I'm going to uh, give you an idea what I think the decade could look like because of inflation. And so this actually is the uh, a diff little different view of seasonality, same uh, season X source. This is just midterm election years going back to 1950. So I did, I just took the midterm election years and I looked for uh, 2022 and how it was similar and how it was different. And the key to using a tool like this is look for the highs and the lows. And then uh, basically the trend. 
you, you don't so much look for uh, extent as much as you look for uh, uh, trend and highs and lows. And so here you can see a low in February 22, the low came in March. Then we have a high at the end of March, and this actually came in, in mid-April, let's say. But then look at right into the end of the quarter, June, we had a very important low, the red line being the, the actual S&P for 2022. And the low came late June, so very close. And then the high, very good rally into August. And then we had a high in August and then another low. Now, if you look closely at the blue line, blue line makes a lower low below the in September, end of September, right before we met. And then June, it, so we call this in Wyckoff a spring. So a lower low, we can see that this is a range bound condition. I contend the market stopped dropping really in late May and went sideways really and built some kind of a cause uh, from late May on. We had a spring in late September. Well, look what we got. We got a lower low in the S&P in late September into mid-October, right at the end of the quarter, and then a rally into the end of the year. Now, the thing that happened in 2022 is we actually had a December that was somewhat down compared to the uh, seasonality, which rose into the end of the year. I think that had a lot to do with the fact that the uh, mega cap growth names were uh, just being dumped by institutions and that they were just getting them off their sheets. They were doing window dressing, tax loss selling, all this was going on. But the interesting part was all we got from that, because we had institutional dumping in late September, we actually had some dumping in June and then we it had a higher, higher low. low. Yes, yeah. exactly. So a uh, very important. Now let's look at, um, uh, let's look. One last thing here is just that these October, November, two best months of the year, very good months in the market in last year. And then December was flat. In fact, it had a downward bias, but a higher low. Now this is this year. And this year you can see um, this is pre-election years. And so in the pre-election year, we can see that Jan January through April, the it, through the first quarter and into the second quarter, the market is up. Well, think back to our decennial pattern. Decennial pattern mid-year flattened out and then stayed flattened out until uh, the end of the year and showed strength. So this this yearly seasonality looking at pre-election years matches the decennial, which is really interesting, I think. So strengthen into April and then maybe into the end of the second quarter and then uh, sideways for the second part of the year with strength at the end. Note the, the four first months of the year, are the best months of the year. And then after that, it, it gets a little quieter. So uh, very interesting. So I really wanted to show you that. And in fact, this is what we have so far. January has been good, very good. And uh, here we are coming into the end of the month. And uh, this is the best month of the year. Well, this has been a very good month. So um, anyway, so there we are. Monster seasonality. Month. So as January goes the rest of the year, Bruce. Huh? Right. And so this could actually be a pretty good year. Remember, we just talked about how we have a white coffee and accumulation style structure, just as we had like in 2002, 2003 and 1982. And so this does have an accumulation characteristic. Now, this chart I talked about when we met last time, Dale, and this is the CPI. And the CPI, this is a little controversial, but I put this chart together based on CPI data and we can see a very large accumulation style structure in, in inflation and in CPI. And I took and I counted it in two segments. And so you can see the, the hinge here and this hinge uh, resolved itself into this, what we call a catapult wall, which was just a wicked, wicked advance that we all experienced. We're still paying for that at the pump. And the target of that, Initial yellow target, eight and a quarter to 1188. 
And so uh, very uh, um, significant uh, advance. And we're all worrying about that because interest rates followed. And the Fed was very slow to respond to this. Well, this is what happened since. Now, it's not completely up to date, but I do have a table for you. But look, here's our eight and a quarter to 1188 target range. We went right up to nine and then had a very sharp reversal. And now we're actually working our way down into the sixes. And so uh, this is how you, in point and figure, really uh, uh, validate your counts is when you get a very sharp, immediate reversal off of your count area. And so uh, this larger count could come into play. We can't predict time with point and figure, but we can predict, uh, we, we try to predict the extent of the move. But look at the extent of the move if we the second part comes into play, and it may not. And uh, but 1575 to 1938, which is just wicked. But here we're looking at this area and we're seeing a sharp reversal off of this. And I think the Fed has effectively gotten what they desired, which is to uh, stop the advance. And so we had a um, uh, great discussion here a few minutes ago. I was listening to you all talk about this. And uh, I really think that the uh, now we don't know how the Fed's going to handle this, uh, but uh, here was the June to June number 9.1, December to December, six and a half now. But look at these numbers. This is the uh, CPI trajectory for 2022. And look at how we hit 292 in May. Remember, that was the uh, internal low or the beginning of our potential accumulation structure. And then 296, and look at, we basically have just stalled. Inflation has stalled. And now, interestingly, we had a 298 and a 297, but uh, we've actually had a downtick and a downtick into the end of the year. And so I really think that uh, I've been watching these numbers pretty closely, and I, these are numbers that go into my point and figure chart. And so I really think that we could be um, uh, have the Fed. I like to say these are the headlines we're going to see in six months, and it's no fun to do, look at the headlines today. Let's let's figure out what they're going to be six months from now. I think one of the headlines is that the Fed comes out six months from now and they say uh, we were right, inflation was transitory, and we see inflation basically stalling in the uh, first. Uh, uh, in 2023, and that I don't know, they'll be very slow to, to lower interest rates. I'm not predicting that. Uh, I think that they well, Bruce, had is a, there anything that you could glean from your data that would say we could have a repeat of the 70s where, um, you know, we had those uh, victory <laughs> celebrations more than once that inflation was defeated, and then it roared back uh, Dale. to a greater magnitude? <laughs> You and I are kindred spirits, I have to say. This is why I love coming here. Uh, the Here is the Dow in the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And so I went back and looked at this because uh, you and I both started our careers on the tail end of all this. And my two business partners, uh, Martin Pring and Joe Turner, were uh, started in the 60s. And so... Uh, the, you know, this was, uh, I, I was required to study this period in great detail. This is the CPI here, and I'm just going to put up all this stuff so that we, and, and you can go to my power charting show to see more on this, but, uh, uh, so a hundred dollars in 1960 required $328 at the end of 1970 to buy the same basket of goods. I mean, it was really just, just a nasty period. This down here is the Dow today. Here's the Dow back 60s, 70s. And you can see inflation has a profound impact on stock prices long-term. It, it definitely, low inflation uh, is great for the market, great for growth stocks. The Nifty 50 era occurred in the 60s into the 70s. That was 51 decision stocks that were growth stocks you could buy, put them away and never think about them. Such stellar stocks that are today like uh, Eastman Kodak. 
And uh, there's a few good ones in there that are still around 3M, IBM, you know, they're still around, but uh, those were the nifty 51 decision stocks. Where could I get so, a pol Polaroid camera? Ex yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, Polaroid. Man, I, yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to take it to a lab, you know, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So, so here we are today. Look at the commonality here, Dale, between, uh, the uh, this is uh, the COVID low, and I'll yeah. just draw a little thing here. COVID low and a yeah. launch. Look at this, sixty-two. This is uh, wow. a number of reasons for this. This is the Cuban Missile Crisis. This is a, a yeah. steel steel prices. Uh, all kinds of problems came on that decline, similar decline in COVID. And then look at this launch here, and look at the family resemblance between then and into twenty twenty. And that was really sort of uh, as we were getting into the late stages of the, uh, the growth stock era. Well, I think we may be looking at something similar because of inflation, because look at the CPI. This is your point, Dale. And that is, is that you have this very low inflation and then it starts to heat up. And here's the inflation that we have now, 181. And I just did every two years. So here's 470, much faster ramp of inflation this time. And so uh, how does the market cope with that? Well, the Fed initially fought this ramp of inflation um, uh, back then. And then I think they declared victory yeah. and we had a Twice. decline. Yeah. yeah. And so they had this big decline. This could be the 2022 low, uh, similar here in 66, and then a rally. And this is the rally into Richard Nixon's uh, first election. And so it goes right, rallies right up into the election, which is a rematch of the, the, uh, the original high. Here we are, we're gonna go into 2024 and we're gonna have an election year in 24. And who knows what's gonna happen, I have no idea. And then uh, here, look at this big, Big rally off the low, and then a reaccumulation structure, classic white coffee and accumulation, and then a thrust up to the prior highs. Maybe we go higher. I the one thing I know is this time is going to be different than the last time, but I do think this big wide trading range could be our world for a long time. This is more than a decade. Yeah. And look at the inflation ramp. This is your point, Dale. They declare victory over here, and then uh, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And uh, and I do have those inflation point figure numbers that count the higher inflation out in the future. And those may that you know maybe something gets hit ten years from now. Who knows? But uh, it took Paul Volcker coming in in the late in seventy nine ish to uh, start to slay inflation. So. Anyway, so that's what I wanted to uh, show you there. I just think that we have uh, of the potential for a either trendless, large downtrend. These big sw these swings here are huge, and so, but also these are huge, and we have to think like a trader maybe for the next number of years, and not think like an investor. And uh, like we could when we had the uh, uh, the dot com the era, bowl. the yes, while and we the, had the punch bowl, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. While so we are, had the punch are, bowl. are you gleaning uh, any targets like at new all time highs off these lows with your point and figure work? Do you have some yeah. price objectives at new highs? Curious. It, it's like it's like we talked about this. Geez, it's like you're reading my mind. So. Here is I have, uh, I have cameras everywhere, man. <laughs> I'm careful what I say and do. Right. So All here's right. I spy on you uh, at stockcharts.com. Uh, very I, good. I, I lurk. <laughs> so then... here's a redistribution <laughs> count. I've got a bunch of counts uh, that I could show, but uh, here's essentially okay. uh, here's a da distribution count off the highs, and look at how beautiful this came in. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, here's our May low. Yeah. Uh, I think this was the May low here. And then here is the June low, July rally. 
And we, tr- we, you know, we attempted to trade all these. We had really good signals on this. Talked about some of those when we got together in October. And so now we have a count here and this count could actually grow larger. We're, uh, we're actually up a little higher right now, but this count takes us. This is, this is 4,800 here. Yeah. And so uh, we have a count now that can get us up to minor new highs. And now we can't say how soon that will happen, but looking at the election characteristics, uh, we might very well be able to do that in 2023 into 2024. And uh, yeah, so uh, here's a smaller count. This is this green area. This count actually can be stretched out a little bit and uh, 4850, uh, which gets us to the high. And then we have this count that gets us a little higher. And then uh, that's roughly where we are now, where that arrow is. And so you can see now uh, I should end on a, uh, there's a couple of things that we can do because I know we're going to run out of time. Um, uh, we talk about the dollar and interest rates for a minute. This is the dollar chart that we used when we got together last time. This is October 12th. We got together on the 13th and we said uh, dollar overbought above this big trend channel now you got to remember my time frames are so can be so long. I love to look at the longer time frames, but I do trade short term. And so here, throw over, overbought, and then here on the daily chart on the right, you can see that there's our buying climax on the daily chart. Now I'm just looking at UUP here. I'm not looking at pairs. Yeah. And so here's our test of the high, and then subsequently what happens since. So this is through. December 1st, but you can see the big break in the market that came after that buying climax. And then here, after that secondary test, you can see what's happened. We came down and out of the trend channel on the daily. This is a monthly trend, a weekly trend channel. Really, you could say monthly, but this is daily. And then here's the point figure chart of where we could go. And the last I looked, which was a day or a few days ago, was we touched 2740 UUP, and this is off this initial uh, distributional top on a swing trading chart. Oh, we already got to that uh, level, 2740? Yes, and so we're actually slightly below the low, and again, what we would look for is some kind of a sharp reversal back in to the range, this range, to confirm. And so uh, we always want to give the trend the I mean, this is a wicked downtrend. Yeah, I mean, it's it's quite velocity. substantial. Yeah, so um, a lot of velocity. There's the uh, short there's the update right there, and then um, um, and then uh, there was some discussion here about interest rates, and that's really interesting. We talked about those last time, and here uh, is the two year yield, which I think uh, this is uh, uh, Mr. Gunlatch's view. Two-year yields are really what set policy, not the Fed. The Fed follows the two-year. And so I look at a lot of two-year long-term charts and so on. But I just wanted to show you, here's the chart, Jan 17. This is the distributional structure. Counts down to uh, 395 to 370. And then uh, over here, you can see this chart's remarkable. This is the 20 plus year US Treasury ETF. This is the distributional TLT. top yeah. TLT with uh, 152 high back in 21. And this was the count that it gave. And we showed this count actually at the time. And we were around 101 when we looked at this in October. And, uh, and we said, well, we're getting into the target zone now. And this count, I actually had originally just taken this count here, widened it out a little more, the 91 and the 93, roughly confirm each other. And then, of course, that's exactly where we went. And then over here uh, on the two year, I took a smaller count of this area and it counts to 390. And I think we've touched, we didn't quite touch 405 yet, but we're in the target zone. So I actually believe, especially with the trajectory of the the CPI numbers, and then also with the, uh, uh, let's say, 
the uh, hitting into this target zone here that we can get below four, we can get into the 390s, but that the two year is basically telling the Fed that, uh, or is going to tell the Fed, if Mr. Gunlatch is right, that uh, rates have come, uh, rates are, are falling, uh, the Fed needs to uh, pause their rate hike uh, cycle Probably they're already, I think, locked into two more rate hikes because of the rhetoric. And but I think that effectively they're done. And the two years we can see from this is uh, already deciding to go down. Yeah, you see a lot of tweets nowadays, Bruce. Uh, uh, Mr. Powell, the market doesn't believe you. And, and of course, if we look at the history of the, these relationships, it seems to always be that way. I've taken this back cycle after cycle, and the two-year tends to lead down and up. And so, uh, well, just on pay central bank to... days, Bruce, I put up a Johnny Lang tune. It's called hey. "Lie to Me." Tell I love me that. Everything is okay. Huge right. Johnny Lang fan. Yeah, I've seen you know him that a few times. I've been seen him in concert. Seen him okay. sing. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's anyway, great. So uh, here, uh, watch my stream for "Lie to Me." All right, go ahead. <laughs> and so here you can just see the spike down. Well, look what hap has happened since. I actually, I call these my Frankenstein charts because I pasted this in here. This is what happened. Look at this sharp advance up and out of this target zone, confirming that this is this and this redistribution count are confirming each other. And let me make one last point here. Here we're looking at prices uh, of bonds, uh, declining prices, rising yield. Here we're looking at yields. I know everybody knows that, but just to to confirm that that's what we're looking at. So, Great and here we are. Are we? Are, am I going to turn into a pumpkin here? Uh, no, uh, I think I think you're more of a cucumber. <laughs> and and you know what? Uh, what you once you turn a cucumber into a pickle, it can never be a cucumber again. Oh, God, that, to no the, turning back. Yeah, so <laughs> anyway, we've crossed the Rubicon, and we're talking about <laughs> things that grow. I love pickles, so it's uh, like a, going from a frog to a prince, because I love pickles. It's kind of 50-50 on cucumbers. You should eat a pickle when you're, playing, when you're playing pickleball. So <laughs> yeah, anyway, gives you an edge. <laughs> so last <laughs> thing, uh, <laughs> unless, you, unless you want more, uh, here's just a... Uh, my it, this is my study chart, my notes, and I put them in here. People can follow them. This is when we got together last time, yeah. and we had green shoots emerging, which yeah. was uh, internal breadth divergences. We had them here. We had them here. We had all kinds of really good uh, divergent characteristics that we traded at the time. Now, but look, we had a a really good run off this October low. Here's the S&P, and we're up into, we're slightly above this downtrend line, which I think uh, my hope is it can stay above. And then here, this yellow shaded area is where all the overhead resistance is above the 200, above the downtrend. Can you These come up with anything that could give us a rally to 4,300 and then fail and make new lows? Yes. Is there, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All um, right. I'm here for you, Dale. And uh, just, uh, there are some people looking that are talking that narrative. Uh, let's see if I can find uh, a chart that would, you, you know, I'm, I've got a whole deck of these things. And, uh, and cause you know, I never know where you're going to go. You know, you're, you're yeah. hard, you're hard, you're a hard man to pin down. Well, and uh, I have that in common with Jack Schwager. He <laughs> doesn't script his interviews. Uh, he says, uh, we have conversations. I've known Jack for almost 40 years. He's a dear, dear friend, dear person. Yeah. So I love the guy. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, here I do have a count here. This count has been sort of a working count for me in green. Yeah. And it goes up to 4325. This is a really important level in my mind, Dale, because this yeah. high from uh August. Right. Is we need to get we need to be able to rally to and through this high at forty three twenty five, 
even if we then have a more important pullback, because that was what we would call in Wyckoff a sign of strength. And uh, we need to have a sign that the market can overcome this overhead resistance to supply that is above the market here. Yeah. If it can't do that, then we really, I think, are in peril of being able to go back down to possibly through the lows. So okay. I'm watching this like a hawk. And yeah, okay. uh, we're very overbought internally in the market, but we're still heading north on divergences and so on. And so that is uh, really kind of the, the key thing for me is okay. to see. So and Bruce, here, uh, people watching you, okay, there it is. It's R.D. Wyckoff is your uh, Twitter handle. And yes, and I really just, uh, more write blogs. I put them up at stock charts. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then also I write, uh, I do a video on Fridays. You can watch it anytime on the Stock Charts YouTube channel. So, uh, and uh, I talk about this stuff every week. A veteran with uh, a lot of wisdom in the technical field, you can't go wrong looking at the pictures that Bruce presents. Dale, yeah, it's always so much fun to hang with you and we're kindred spirits and uh, it's uh, you're actually one step ahead of me all the time. I, so I have to have 80 slides for this talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you had everything. Everything I didn't know prior, I was going to ask you. You had them. <laughs> so the last so, thing I'll, I'll leave is this was then September 29th. I yeah. put this chart up actually the yeah. last time we talked, and this was sentiment, extreme right. fear, 14. This had just yeah. happened right at the end of the quarter. This right. is today, January 30th, uh, and you you can see now. So the, the pendulum is always swinging. Yeah. That's the main thing to take away from here. So yin trend yang. is up. Yeah. Look for divergences. Yeah. Yin yang and trade the middle. Yes. And don't lie to me. Listen yeah. to Johnny Lang. Johnny <laughs> Lang. Well, what a, could he bend him? So, Bruce, thank you, my trading warrior brother. Really. Th thank you, so. Dale. I have a thank great time. And, I, and uh, we learn from you every time you're here. It's, it's great to be here. Take all care, right. everyone. Bruce Fraser, everybody. Uh, have a great day trading. Join the team in 10 minutes for the morning edge, and we'll catch everyone tomorrow for Turnaround Tuesday. Adios. Thanks again, Bruce. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Hey, traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.